And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, travel in the earth. See what became of those who came before you. And so we went into the Pacific. And a Harvard University study done by a man named Barry Fell is called Saga America, which you may be able to get in your library, although historians have waged war against his work to the point where he had to put it underground. He was a person who translates different languages. And so they found the writings of many different peoples in America, in pictographs. They found in caves. They found it in different rocks, different parts of America. And a type of scribbling, which they thought was the scribbling of the native people, Barry Fell and his team came to find out that it was actually the combination of an ancient Libyan script and Kufic Arabic. He took this proof to Benghazi, Libya, and Tripoli, Libya, and he brought scholars, UNESCO scholars, Arabic-speaking scholars, to America to investigate the information and startling proof of Islamic presence in the Southwest, in California, came to light. They found an engraving in Nevada, in a bedrock, huge bedrock, saying, Ismullah, the name of Allah. They found a 7th century Kufic uh, writing on uh, the boundary peak and the border of Nevada and California saying shaitan is the fountain of lies. They found Muhammad, Nabiullah, alayhi salatu wasalam. They found this, this writing all over the Southwest. And they realized that the native people, especially the rock-dwelling people, who made their structures built into the side of mountains, that the configuration of their houses is the same configuration as the Bedouins as the people living in southern Algeria and Libya and Morocco. They found the clothing, designs on the clothing, tattoos on the faces, a number of cultural realities of the people living in the southwest were the same as Muslims living in North Africa. And they found a map, an 8th century map, and that is where they found Juzr al-Hawa. And the map showed the Hudson Bay, it showed Panama. It clearly showed that Muslims came across and were actually mapping the United States, Mexico, down into Central America. On the eastern side, proof has come to us through Al Mas'udi, a famous geographer in Muruj al Dahab, written approximately 956 AD, where he spoke of the journey of a man named Khashkhas ibn Sa'id who came into, who went into the, the, the Sea of Darkness, the Atlantic, and came back with treasure, and everybody in Andalusia knew about the journey of Khashkhas. This is what Mas'udi writes in his book, which is still in the library. Al-Idrisi, in, in the 12th century, in his geography book, wrote about the, the, the journey of Magharaba, these seafaring North African Andalusians, who went into the ocean and found a set of islands went to another set, were captured, blindfolded, and the king on the islands spoke to them through an interpreter who spoke Arabic. This is in the 12th century. And he told them about their position and about how long it would take to get back home. The most startling of these many reports, and I'm only bringing you a few, but probably the most startling is in Al-Umari. Masalak al-Abra fi mamalak al-Amsar. This is a geography book which shows the journey of different travelers into the different kingdoms uh, of the earth. And in it, it speaks about the journey of Mansa Musa, a West African Islamic ruler, who in approximately the year 1324 made pilgrimage to Mecca. And Amir Mansa Musa carried with him 72,000 followers. Do you imagine this? 72,000 people crossed the Sahara Desert. They carried so much gold with them that they changed the economy of every country that they reached. When they came into Egypt, Ibn Amir Hajib, the reporter of, of Al Umari, said to them, where did you get this power and authority from? And he said, I come from a lineage of kings in Mali. And my predecessor, Abu Bakr, went into the Atlantic with 2,000 ships 
and he never returned. These people are known as Mandinka, the Mandate speaking. We say Mandingo in the Americas, the Mandingos. And they crossed from the Guinea coast of West Africa using the currents. And if you look at a map, you will see the closeness between the West African coast and Brazil. And the currents go right into it. And a Scandinavian uh, scientist, Thor Heyerdahl, in the 60s took a boat and he went across by himself in a boat made of papyrus and he showed that you can get across the Atlantic uh, with a boat made of indigenous African materials and you don't have to be on, on, on the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria of Christopher Columbus. Because Columbus, we know, was lost. And they found him around 1492. And so the Mandinka Muslims went across and writings were found on the Amazon. All along the Amazon, mounds were found with Mandinka writing, talking about their journey and how they went along the Amazon into Central America, into the southwest of the United States and Leo Weiner in his book Africa and the Discovery of America, another Harvard University scholar, came forth with proof to show that these African Muslims came into the United States and actually were in the Southwest and the mounds in the Southwest are showing elephants. And they said the desert is hot, the birds are numerous, the elephants are tired. And they went up the Mississippi. And Leo Weiner showed that they actually made contact with the native people and they came in contact with the Algonquin and Iroquois nation and they mixed with the native inhabitants of this part of the world. And so the journeys of the Muslims came, continued. But because they were not able to establish themselves, because they were not able to keep the link with the rest of the Muslim world, the link with the knowledge, making Islam relevant to the world that they lived in, and then the conquest of the Spanish conquistadores, when they came in and destroyed all forms of culture that they found. Because of this, we have no traces of them except for these few writings of the scholars. And now it is being unearthed, the writings in different parts of America.